for going off. I'd also like to say a couple of special thanks as well. I would like to thank uh, our accompanist, Phyllis Keller. I would like to thank my son, and whom I'm well pleased, Brian, on the guitar. And my very good friend, Dan Larson, on the drums. There were a lot of parents who served on different committees and things, and if I tried to name everyone, uh, I would probably forget. So I would like to give all those parents who served on committees a round of applause. Okay, we're going to have a solo now called Maybe from Annie, and it's going to be performed by Megan Drescher. Thank <laughs> you. 
time. I was I was waiting for the uh, the, the first half to not be over until about now, and so we're making great time. Uh, there's a couple of people that I want to thank just uh, real briefly. I want to thank uh, Mrs. Barr for the sign uh, that she made for us. And I also want to thank uh, Coach Newsweek Cable for coming out and videotaping. I don't know exactly when it will be on, but as soon as I know, I'll let you know. Um, so I appreciate that. And we're going to begin the second part of our show now with another small group. And they're going to do a song called I'm On My Way, and it's from the musical Paint Your Wagon.
invite you to sing the last song with us. The choir is going to move out and they're going to sing around the tables with you. The words to the song are printed in your program. Good night by someone. And it's from the music man. Stand please. A major note is coming due, so they're now giving an extra 10% off. Here's your chance to select the oriental rug of your dreams for pennies on the dollar. But don't delay. There are only nine more days left to take advantage of this additional discount. There's still a wide selection of exquisite rugs in all shapes, sizes, and patterns. Skokie Oriental Rugs' magnificent collection includes new and antique Persian rugs and one-of-a-kind rugs from Pakistan, India, Turkey, Afghanistan, and China. Whether you need an area rug, a runner, or a room-sized rug to complement your home or office decor, their knowledgeable staff can help you select the perfect rug. Shop now for best selection, because these hand-woven rugs won't last at these fantastic prices. Take an extra 10% from every rug on final liquidation sale at 58 to 78 percent off, only for the next nine days at Skokie Oriental Rugs, 5309 West Tui, just west of Eden's Expressway. Call 1-800-713-RUGS. That's 1-800-713-RUGS. Look what just blew in. The CCM Brass, the new dimension of the Chicago Chamber Musicians, featuring Barbara Butler and Charles Geyer trumpets, Michael Mulcahy trombone, Gene Bacorny tuba, and Gail Williams horn. Discover the CCM Brass at their debut concerts tomorrow at Evanston's Pickstager Hall, and Monday at the DePaul Concert Hall in Chicago, both of those concerts at 7.30 p.m. Call for tickets at 312-DIAL-CCM. That's 342-5226. Good evening, this is Andy Karzis welcoming you to From the Recording Horn, a weekly program of opera and song from the early days of recording featuring artists who were once among the greatest celebrities of their time. Tonight, a piacere, our regular end-of-the-month program of odds and ends and listener requests. And we'll hear two American baritones, more by Luigi Danza, a pronunciation lesson from Adelina Patti, and Hermann Jadlovker as Mozart's Idomeneo. It had always seemed to me that baritone Thomas Hampson must be an intelligent man. My guess was proven to be true when I read an article in the Chicago Tribune of February 12th by music critic John von Rhein. Asked by von Rhein to name some of the artists of the past who influenced him, Thomas Hampson named Giuseppe De Luca, Heinrich Schlusnus, and Dietrich Fischer Dieskau. Hampson went on to say that he was often shocked to learn how ignorant and ill informed today's voice students are about great singers of the past. Quote Hampson I'm abjectly against the severing of ties with deep history. It would be anathema to me not to know who sang my repertoire before me. An American baritone voice student who doesn't know John Charles Thomas 
or Lawrence Tibbet should go shovel manure for a year. End quote, and bravo, Thomas Hampson. If any young would-be baritones are listening, we'll save you that unappealing prospect about the manure. Within the next few minutes, you'll have heard both John Charles Thomas and Lawrence Tibbet. Baritone John Charles Thomas made his Chicago Opera debut in 1930 as Tony on Pagliacci and won on that occasion one of the greatest demonstrations ever heard in the Civic Opera House. The audience continued to yell his name throughout the entire intermission. Born in Virginia on September 6, 1891, Thomas made his operatic debut in 1924 as Amonastro in Aida with the Washington, D.C. Opera Company and on August 1st, 1925, made his American operatic debut at the Théâtre de la Monnaie in Brussels as Herod in Massenet's Herodiade. Chicago roles included Renato in Ballo in Mascara, Atanael in Thais, Figaro, Falstaff, Rigoletto. He made his Metropolitan Opera debut on February 2nd, 1934 as Germont, opposite Poncel and Schipa. He sang with the Met through the 1942-43 season, his last Chicago opera appearance was in 1942 as Germont in La Traviata. Thomas was extremely popular on radio and in concerts around America. After teaching for several years, he died in California on December 13, 1960. We'll hear him tonight singing Di Provenza il Mar il Suol from Verdi's La Traviata. It was recorded for Victor in the early 1930s. Oh, 
Di Provenza il Mar il Sol from Verdi's La Traviata, recorded by John Charles Thomas. Baritone Lawrence Tibbet was the first in a line of American-born baritones to sing the major Verdi baritone parts at the Metropolitan, and to many he has remained the best. Born in California in 1896, Tibbet made his Metropolitan Opera debut in 1923. His first season and a half were spent singing dozens of performances in small roles. Then, on the evening of January 22, 1925, when he sang his first performance as Ford in Falstaff, the audience declared him a star. Here is how Lawrence Gilman reported it in the New York Herald Tribune. Quote, Though Mr. Scotty was the dominant figure in the cast, it must be recorded that it was a young and relatively obscure American singer who walked away with the chief honors last night. Indeed, he succeeded in stopping the show. This unheard of deed was accomplished by Mr. Lawrence Tibbet, the young California baritone who joined the Metropolitan last season. He was the forward of last night's cast, and his magnetic and authoritative performance in the inn scene of the second act took the audience completely captive. After the curtain had fallen on the scene, they kept up a tornado of applause, shouts, whistles, and catcalls, paying no attention whatever to the fact that Mr. Seraphine was politely impatient to get on with the next scene, and that the modest Mr. Tibbet evidently did not want to get between the limelight and Mr. Scotty and take a curtain call alone. But his compatriots would not let him off, for this was no clack-born riot, but honest American enthusiasm. And so, finally, Mr. Tibbet showed himself alone before the yellow curtains, and the audience split the roof. Then the show proceeded, end quote Lawrence Gilman. Tibbet grew slowly but surely into a magnificent artist with many of the great Italian baritone parts in his repertory, and several creations, including Brutus Jones in The Emperor Jones, and Wrestling Bradford in Marymount. In 1935, he sang the first of his 32 Metropolitan Opera Rigolettos. In 1938, he sang the title role in Falstaff. His Met career ended along with the Edward Johnson regime after the 1949-50 season. Tibbet died in New York on July 15, 1960. Here is Lawrence Tibbet in his prime, singing Wherever You Walk from Handel's Semele, a famous and beautiful record.
Where'er You Walk from Handel's Semele, recorded by Lawrence Tibbet, and played in enthusiastic support of a recent statement by Thomas Hampson. Quoting Mr. Hampson further, the problem is a lot of students are being told by their teachers they shouldn't listen to old recordings because they will imitate them. That's unmitigated BS. I tell young singers, listen and learn. Don't imitate, learn. End quote, Thomas Hampson. May I add a further personal word? If you're a young singer and you can't find those old recordings, drop me a note anytime. That's what our monthly request program is for. After our recent program of several recordings of the song Si vous l'aviez compris by Luigi Denza, many people commented on the beauty of the song. One good friend, a very knowledgeable art historian, admitted that of Denza's output he knew little more than funiculi funicula. And what a wonderful song that is, written to describe a funicular railroad running up a mountainside. Here is Funiculi Funicula by Densa in an irrepressibly joyful recording by soprano Melitza Corius. I play it often on this program and hope that you too, like me, enjoy it more each time. Funiculi Funicula by Luigi Denza, recorded in 1935 by Melitza Corius. Just a couple years later, Madame Corius was nominated for an Academy Award for her role in MGM's The Great Waltz.
You're listening to From the Recording Horn on WFMT, Chicago's fine arts station, broadcasting at 98.7 FM. If you love plants and the beauty of fine quality landscaping, you should know about the Sinestvet Company. Quality landscaping starts with a breathtaking design, and Sinestvet's award-winning landscape architects have designed some of Chicagoland's most beautiful estates. Once you've approved your custom design, you may personally select your plants from Sinestvet's own 400-acre wholesale nursery, offering a complete selection of hardy trees, shrubs, perennials, and ground covers. Sinestvet's experienced construction professionals then complete your project with meticulous care. To arrange for a personal consultation with a Sinestvet landscape architect, please call 